Hi there, this is Matthew Brown back with another Eduonics tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over factory default settings and workspaces in Adobe Photoshop. We'll start with the very first thing you need to do when using Photoshop. First, you need to actually open Photoshop, run the program itself. But hold up, before we run Photoshop, there's one thing we need to do to make sure that we're all on the same page. This goes back to the factory default settings I was talking about. So, if you happen to have Photoshop open already, like I do, please go to the top right corner of the window and click on the X button to close the program. Now, Photoshop is no longer running. Whether you've used your copy of Photoshop or not, it's important to know that Photoshop has a lot of settings that you can customize to your own creative style. These settings will affect the way the program looks and operates. So depending on what you've done with your own copy of Photoshop, and what I've done with mine, we could end up seeing two completely different things. In order for you to get the most out of this course, it's best for all of our settings to be exactly the same. So in order to do this, we're going to have to reset our individual copies of Photoshop to their factory default settings. There are several ways to do this. I found that the easiest way for me is through a keyboard shortcut. Keyboard shortcuts are very common in Photoshop and they exist to speed up the system to match the speed of your creative process. So please, find your shortcut to Adobe Photoshop, but don't double click it just yet. I need you to find the Control, Alt, and Shift keys on your keyboard before we double click the program icon. Our plan is to double click the program icon, then immediately press and hold the Control, Alt, and Shift keys on our keyboard. At that point, we're going to keep holding them down until a dialog box appears. The box doesn't appear and Photoshop happens to open up just like normal instead. No worries. Just close the program and try again. Odds are it was just a mistiming of the Control, Alt, and Shift keys on the keyboard. As long as we do this right, and you press those keys right after double-clicking the icon, we should have no worries. Okay, so ready? Double-click, Control, Alt, Shift. Okay, a dialog box appeared. It's asking us if we want to delete the Adobe Photoshop settings file. I'm going to go ahead and go over and click yes, because I do want to delete the Adobe Photoshop settings file. What this will do is delete the file that Photoshop automatically creates whenever you change any settings within the program. Now with that settings file deleted, the program will automatically boot with the factory default settings. And you and I will see the exact same thing on screen. Just as a quick tip, this is also a good thing to try if your copy of Photoshop starts to act a little bit funky. You might find that resetting to the factory default settings might solve any issues you may be getting within Photoshop. Alright, things are picking up. We are now inside the program. We've made the first step in mastering Adobe Photoshop. Now I don't know about you, but this layout is looking a little bit dark for me. One neat feature that I like about Photoshop is the option to customize the brightness of our interface. I'm going to drag my mouse up to the menu bar and click on Edit. Then I'm going to keep hovering down till I get to Preferences. And I'm going to hover straight over to Interface. Now we've pulled up the Preferences window on the Interface tab. The very first option that we see under Appearance is our color theme. And we have four options given here, going from darkest to lightest. Because I like things to be a little bit brighter than Photoshop selects as the default, I'm going to go ahead and click the brightest color they've provided. Now the interface is much brighter, and it seems like the buttons tend to stand out just a little bit more, too. I like the way this looks much better. So, to apply these changes, I'll go over to the right and click OK. Like I said before, there are many settings that you can customize to your creative style. Maybe you're using Photoshop purely for motion graphics. Maybe you're using Photoshop for your photography. 
Since there are so many features in Photoshop, it can be necessary to narrow them down to the ones that you use the most. For this reason, Photoshop has a few default workspaces to accommodate your needs. Let's go up to the menu bar again, but this time we'll click on Window. Then we'll go down to Workspace, and then go over and click Motion. Now we've been switched to the default motion workspace. This would primarily be used for animation and motion graphics. You may notice a few changes here. A new tab has been added to the bottom of our workspace. This one's labeled Timeline. And this is where we would see individual frames of images for our animation. Some more changes in our workspace are near the top right corner of the screen. The color and swatches tab have been replaced by a histogram and our document info. Not to mention our side panel here has gained an additional six buttons to assist in animation using Photoshop. This is just one of the many different workspaces possible within Photoshop and there are several more that are available just by default. So let's go back up to that menu bar and we'll click window again We'll hover to Workspace, and then we'll hover over to Painting. Right away, you can see that our Histogram and Info tabs have been replaced by Swatches and Navigator tabs. We also have a whole new tab full of brush presets. This workspace has been made to accommodate the tasks of a digital painter. We're not going to be doing any animation or painting at the moment, so let's go back to our original workspace. We could go back and click Window on the menu bar again, or you may notice that here on the top, there's a button under the Minimize, Restore, and Close buttons. This is a quick workspace shortcut. So since Essentials was the first workspace that we started out with, that's the one that we'll go back to. Photoshop even allows you to create and save your own workspaces. All we have to do is adjust the layout to the way that we prefer and save our progress. For instance, we could go over here and click and drag our toolbar and drag it right into the middle of our workspace and keep it there. And also, if we felt like it, we could go over here, grab our layers panel, and drag it to where that toolbar was. Now watch what happens as we approach the edge of where the toolbar was. You'll notice that a blue vertical line has appeared. This represents to where the panel will snap to once you release it. Let's say that we prefer this layout for our creative style. Let's save it so we can switch to and from it whenever we like. Let's go back up to that shortcut button again. We'll click on it and then we'll hover down to New Workspace. We can name this whatever we like. Let's just call it uh, New Workspace. And then we'll go over and click Save. Now let's say that we want to go back to our default workspace. Which one was that again? Over here, we go to the Essentials workspace. We'll go ahead and click that. Uh-oh, nothing's changed. That's okay. All we have to do is click on this again, go down to Reset Essentials. Ah, everything is back to the way it was. And now our new workspace is available for us to switch to whenever we like. You can see it right there. I encourage you to play around a little bit with layouts. It may not be that important now, but down the road it can be very helpful once you develop your creative process. And remember, if you make a mistake and delete or add something that you decide that you don't want, don't panic. Just switch to a default workspace and reset it. In the next video, we will focus on creating a new document within Photoshop and opening pre-existing images for editing.